Hi and welcome to my channel Animal Instinct. I'm Kelly and this is my second FlossTube video. Thank you very much to those people who liked and commented on my first video. It meant a lot to me. It was very daunting to put myself out there but um, I had fun and so here I am back for another go. Today is Saturday the 16th of November and I am coming to you live from my brand new stitching chair which is very exciting. Um, I mentioned last time two months ago I moved house and the chairs, the couches that were in my old house live there so I uh, moved here and I oops, <laughs> I've been sitting on that chair for the last two months. It's okay. It's not great when you have a bad back though. Uh, I ordered this chair months ago. It, apparently it takes a few months to build. Um, so I had this chair, which is a recliner delivered yesterday, um, along with a three seater um, couch as well, which is right next to me. It was the most stressful day ever because the delivery men claimed they could not get them through my doors. Um, they tried, they claimed they tried everything. I was so stressed out. Um, I was literally on the phone to the company navigating my way <laughs> through their phone menu to speak to someone to find out what to do and they decided to try one last method and we got them in. So I was so out of sorts yesterday after that. I didn't even want to sit on the chairs. They were like in the, in the naughty corner, um, but I've forgiven them now and they're just great. So this one, as I said, is a recliner and the one in the showroom didn't have this, but it's even got a USB charger in it. Very cool. So I've now relaxed. I've recovered from the stress of yesterday um, and I've got a big pile of whips and things to show you. So today I'm going to go through, um, I've got a list here. So I have an FFO very exciting. Um, have a couple of finishes, plenty of whips. I have one new start, a little bit of haul, um, some plans, and maybe if I get time I've got something else I wanted to show you at the end. Um, so first of all, I debated a little bit about showing this, but then I <laughs> told myself no one watches your videos, so it doesn't really matter. So this is my piece um, that I'm putting into the Smalls Exchange at the Mittagong Retreat, which is next weekend, this time in a week. Um, yeah, no one watches my videos. <laughs> I've got nothing to worry about. And even if for some reason someone saw it, um, I'm going to wrap it up so they're not going to know what they're getting. It's still going to be a surprise. And I was just really excited to actually finish something. So I wanted to show you. So, I made a version of this, Queen of the Needle by Brenda Gervais, um, and it's great. I'd like, I'm going to have to do it again for myself, I kind of don't want to give this away. <laughs> so, uh, I used 40 count... Um, Tyco picture this plus linen and I got a I got a piece 12 by 17 and I only used a tiny bit so I only use that much the pattern came with finishing instructions for the pillow and they're a bit confusing I've got to say it's probably just because I'm a beginner but I didn't really understand why they said I think they said to get like a nine and a half inch piece of linen and then once you've finished stitching it cut like an inch around it i just thought that was a lot of waste because it's only a fairly small pattern so i didn't quite follow those instructions um so yeah without further ado here's my little pillow this is the first pillow i've ever made <laughs> so it's a little flawed but it's just got personality that's fine I used the cold for um, floss on her dress and the red of the tomato and the text, Queen of the Needle. Um, the rest is in DMC. Uh, it's one strand of thread over two squares except for the needle. I can't seem to get it to focus up close, but um, the needle is one over one 
um, but it's only half stitches because they're tiny. Um, I decided a queen needs a sparkly crown. I think the cold four was like a yellowy colour, um, but I pulled some petite treasure braid from my Chatelaine and it's a, like a rose gold. It's really nice. So um, the spool there has, is satin stitched. Um, and then on the back is just, um, it's a slightly shiny fabric. I thought it was regal. <laughs> Uh, you can't really see that on there. Um, so I followed, I actually followed Bonner's, um, the Twisted Stitches pillow finishing um, tutorial. She'd probably not be too happy with me because the corners are a bit wonky, but that's okay. It's got character. Um, what I did follow um, with the instructions provided was for the Rick Crack. They, um, so I bought the Rick Crack sort of to go with the kit. Um, and it's really narrow. It's only quarter inch, I think. And instead of incorporating it into the seam, you stitch it on top of the seam and then you're supposed to use your iron to um, get the points to stick up, but I just couldn't get that to happen. So anyway, it's fine. So there is my little queen of the needle pillow. I hope the recipient enjoys it. Um, now, I think we saw it mentioned on, was it a recent um, Brenda and the Serial Starter floss tube? I think it was those ladies. Um, I certainly hadn't seen that before. And the reason I found it was I saw this advertised. I think I saw it on Instagram. And I got excited because it was when I was starting uh, making project bags. And I just had to get a kit. So it's a kit to make this project bag, also by, designed by Brenda Gervais, Stitches Rule. And it's got Queen of the Needle and Boss of the Floss. And if you have a look, there we go. So instructions, pretty good. Um, this is my bag. So I've made some beginner mistakes and I actually have to turn it inside out and fix up the corners so don't look at the corners but this is my bag and it comes with so it comes with this fabric panel and the ticking the green which is the same on the back um, and it actually comes with I haven't done it yet but see is it a strawberry on the zipper pull so it does actually have instructions to make that and it comes with a bit of um, fabric and felt to do that. I haven't done that yet. Um, so you have to provide um, the zip, uh, Rick Crack if you want to use it. Um, the lining, I just use calico. Actually, you can see it's still open <laughs> so I can fix my corners. <laughs> Oops. Um, and you also just need to provide the... Um, wadding um, so that was that was fun to do it's really fun to do and it's great theme um, yeah and if I hadn't known if I hadn't looked into that um, I wouldn't have known about the pillow um, actually I didn't show you they suggested adding for some texture I've added DMC um, some thread to all of the spools in the bobbins there a bit of extra um, yeah so that's that one I might still add um, a bit of floss through the eye of the needle haven't decided yet okay next up oops Try and stay organized today see how long that lasts uh, I've had a finish so this is one I've seen lots of people doing these um, from stitch box on Etsy you send her a picture of your pet and she charts it up um, and then um, you, if you're not quite happy with it you can tweak it a bit um, until you get something that you're happy with and ages ago, months and months ago, I got one for each of my cats. 
um, and I had started Leo's earlier this year. Um, this is the mock-up. Um, now, if I can figure out how to insert a picture, I'll show you the photo that um, this is based on. Um, but I felt, um, so I'd started this ages ago. I forgot to show it last time, um, but I decided to work on it because, um, yeah, as a memorial to him. And I've stitched it on 18 Count Ada. Um, it's dyed by Jodie Reedy Designs and it was one of her um, fabric of the months. I think it's called Mermaid Dreams. And there it is, dear old Leo. So very therapeutic to stitch that. I just have to find a frame now for it. Um, and I have Jemima's, which I'll start at some stage, I guess. Okay, next. I am managing to stay up to date still with the Lakeside Needlecraft Woodland um, sow. So every, at the start of the month, first or the second, I think, um, uh, the, the next creature comes out. And this month it was a squirrel. Uh, And he's all done. I assume it's a he. So I'm stitching this on 32 count Lagana um, in the Woodside colorway Oops. Um, from them. There he is. And that's the start of the second row of animals. So I'll show you the whole lot. So there's still seven to go. I'm really interested to see what um, what else they come up with. So it's all designed. It's designed, sorry, by Durian Jones. That's the that's it so far. So owl, rabbit, weasel, stag, and squirrel. It's very easy um, and enjoyable to stitch that one. No. I mean, quite chuffed that I'm still up to date with it. Okay, next up uh, is my chatelaine. So I'm doing the Taj Mahal chatelaine. Spent a lot of time in India, um, and this is a great, great way to think about my my trip um, and to have a long-term memory piece I guess so it's all ready to go because I'm gonna um, work on it after this video but I've been working on the bottom left corner Oops. Yeah. <laughs> there we go isn't it just so pretty hopefully you can hear me behind the frame um, I've almost finished the stitching in that bottom left corner I'm finding the black fine to work on as long as I have something light on my lap to see see through it. Even the TV helps, the light of the TV. I do need lighting, but it can't be directly on the fabric um, because then I can't see the holes and I can't have tired eyes. <laughs> um, the, fab the floss that's on it is a purple. Oops. Um, and the purple with the black, just, I couldn't see. <laughs> so it's beautiful lighting and I don't have tired eyes. So that's what I'm doing next. All right, just starting to drop everything. It's beginning. Uh, what else have I been working on? Ah, I pulled out this piece as a bit of a focus piece this week. Um, my Bee by Lorna Lane, chartered by Gecko Rouge. Love this piece. As soon as I saw it, had to buy it. I think I bought it when it came out on pre-order. Um, it's now become one of their top 10 popular pieces, I think. 
um, but I started it a long time ago so I'm probably further along than than other um, other people I've seen stitching it but I've put it down for a long time so you know I'm sure someone will overtake me that's fine so I'm stitching it on 25 count um, I think it's is it magic magic guide the one with the reds the red lines and it's 20 by 20 on the fabric not 10 by 10 whatever that one is um, <laughs> I mentioned I was out of sorts yesterday. I wasn't going to stitch at all, but I did decide to put a few stitches in last night. Um, and I've left the needle is like halfway through the fabric. I've never seen, I've never done that before that I know of, but anyway. <laughs> so I'm working up here and probably in the last week I've done, I've done quite a bit, all of that. So if you think about it, each of these squares is 400 stitches, so it doesn't look like much, um, but it is. So really motivated to um, get a lot done on this one. Love to finish it. Okay. Getting, getting there. I must be talking really quickly maybe because it's only 16 minutes. I hope that's okay. Uh, it's barely worth even showing you this, but I did put some stitches in to my Snort Stack Plum Street Samplers. So I had to log into a webinar after work last week. Um, for a course I'm doing on foot and mouth disease and it was just something I just had to listen in for an hour um, I'm not good at sitting still um, that's why I cross stitch I can't watch TV without stitching really um, and I wanted something simple to do um, so I could still concentrate on what they were saying and it's just occurred to me it's funny the one I picked um, as a reminder I've already done the cow one on 36 count natural linen and I've done a tiny tiny little bit on the on the pigs just the start of that flower and a little bit of the border but um <laughs> been learning all about foot and mouth disease and pigs and cattle um, both uh, suffer from that disease so there you go maybe it's my ode to foot and mouth disease ode to keeping it out of Australia Okay, moving on. One new start this last two weeks, this last fortnight, yeah, one new start. Um, I think I started it on a Monday. Uh, if you've watched Married with Stitches, they talk about BBM, where you pick a big project and work on it on a Monday. Um, I've been wanting to start this. I, I showed it last time. It's the Queen Mermaid Mirabilia. Oh, I've got the shake, sorry. I'm doing her on 32 count Lugana um, by Colour Cascade Fabric uh, in the colourway Mer When Mermaids Cry. So I've only just made a small start there. I think it's going to look really nice. You see my little arrows so that I don't accidentally turn it upside down. <laughs> um, oops. The, the whole fabric um, at the moment it's blending in a little bit but I, I'm pretty sure it's gonna um, be fine I did a floss toss and I double checked that before I started so only a small start on Queen that is all of my cross stitching for the last two weeks what's next Oh, just a little bit of haul. Um, not much. Um, I've been collecting these beautiful patterns. Cottage Garden Samplings, the Songbird series. Um, 
I haven't started any. I probably won't put the words in. I might put something else there. I haven't quite decided, but they're great. Like that's so cool. Um, so I got, I just got a couple more. Couple. That one. That one. And this one. And funnily enough, my other piece of haul, which isn't cross-stitch related, I was at my local um, big chain store spotlight to get some fabric. And um, I don't have any of the bags here, but I showed some bags that I'd made last time with um, like an Australiana theme, like birds and flowers. Um, and I found that um, there's a range of cushions with the same fabric. Uh, so I've just got these chairs, they're quite dark, so I want something bright. And so I think these might be Banksias. Very, very nice with the, the blue bobbly things. And the other one I got. I'm not sure, I need to check this. I think it's a willy wagtail, a colorful willy wagtail. I like that. And that got me thinking, we've got really pretty birds and flowers in Australia. Wouldn't it be amazing to have something along the lines of this with Australian birds and flowers? So we've got six states and two territories here in Australia and we've got um, each of those has its own um, bird and flower. Um, so for example, South Australia where I live, it's the magpie and the um, Dirt as a pea. Um, there are patterns out there um, for birds and flowers, but they're they're a bit dated. So if someone could come up with a more modern way of um, showing them, like in this style, that would be amazing. So if anyone um, is interested in doing that. I think that people would be interested, Australians at least. Um, and it's funny because in one of the Facebook groups I'm in, someone just raised their point today that well, they were asking if there are any Australian themed stitch alongs um, because it, most things are more American themed, American centric, I guess. Um, and I'd already been thinking about, about a state flower and bird combo, but I'm no designer, so I won't be doing that. <laughs> um, that and I must have spoken really quickly so I've got heaps of time left um, actually not that so next week off to Mittagong to meet 50 other or well, 49 other um, stitches it's gonna be great really really looking forward to it I'm not ready at all haven't thought about packing or anything like that don't know what I'm gonna take um, but I might go with this one. Um, so this is a bag. I had a, another bag making spree um, the last fortnight. Look at the cats. It's just these cool black cats with gold. Anyway, in here is um, a kit that I've had for a long time, months and months. Um, I bought it when it first came out and this could be one that I'll take, um, but it's Heartstring Sampler is the cat sampler. I'm not a crazy cat lady, I promise. <laughs> it might seem that way, but any animals, no, fine by me. Um, so I thought, because if you look, look at all the house, I'm pretty sure that's one red colour. Um, so if I started it, and got a bit of a an outline I guess before next week and then um then I can just like put in loads of red so at the moment that's what I'm going with um but I'm very may I may change my mind um when I got it I also splurged and got the um called for glosses too Um, 
Now this was sitting in front of me, so I thought, may as well share it. This is my Oort jar at the moment. Uh, take the Oorts out. <laughs> it's a little bowl I bought. Now I either bought it in Lhasa, Tibet, or Leh Ladakh, India, one or the other. Um, but it's got dragons on it. It's that beautiful green stone. I don't know what it's made of. Um, but on the same the same big trip I probably mentioned last time, I did. I was very fortunate to go into Tibet, um, and then I also spent a month in the Indian Himalayas up in the state of Ladakh, and I um, lived in a in a local family's home for a month and just sterilized dogs and gave them rabies vaccinations. It was a really, really amazing experience. And while I was, I think I might've got it in lay. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. It's, you know, it's the same culture. So they're all um, Tibetan Buddhists. And while I was there, the Dalai Lama came um, to do some teaching and he, it was a huge event for the local people, so special for them. So they spent about a week preparing, me too. Um, we built huge juniper uh, burners on the side of the road. So when he came in from the airport and was driven to his residence, uh, I can't remember the distance, it might've been half an hour away. Um, the streets were lined with the local people in their beautiful finery um, and all these these burners and it was amazing. Um, we all got given the white prayer scarves. So as he drove past, we sort of offered them in, as a sign of respect, um, made eye contact with him. I didn't really know much about him at that point, um, but it was a really special experience. Uh, it was really cool. And then he gave teachings to the local people. So in this huge field, like, a, yeah, I guess it was a field, um, they constructed a stage um, and there were Buddhist monks and nuns um, at the front and then thousands of Ladakhis um, all dressed up. It was so hot. Um, we were out in the blazing sun and he spoke in Tibetan, it was translated across the field in Ladakhi through loudspeakers. I was sitting in a little um, section for international people and I think it was coming through our speakers in English. Um, plus we had FM radios that we could dial in. Certain channels would be broadcast in different languages. Um, it went completely over my head. It was very advanced Buddhist Buddhism, um, but really cool. So. I didn't get to um, buy too many souvenirs because I was on the road for such a long time. Um, but I've got little things like that that are quite special and bring back lots of great memories. So that came out when I was unpacking my house, so it's become an ore jar for now. Maybe I should do something nicer with it, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, one last thing. And my washing machine is beeping at me. So hopefully that's not annoying. Um, when I was unpacking my house, I came across this project that's been put on hold. Um, I'm definitely gonna pull it out again. Um, all, I'm all inspired. So a few years ago now, um, I decided I wanted to make a quilt and not any old quilt. <laughs> um, it's interesting with antique reproduction samplers, cross stitch samplers are older age um, at the moment. This is the quilt version. So this is a picture of the original quilt um, sampler. It was stitched in 1863 by Jane Stickle. And there's 120, no, 169 individual squares and they're all different, unique. 
um, and the triangles too. So all together there's 200, excuse me, 225 unique patterns. Um, the author of this book, Brenda Papadakis, um, came across the quilt, um, decided to painstakingly um, chart it and reproduce it. And it's it's got almost a cult following, so many of you will be familiar with Dear Jane. Um, through the book, she's written letters to Jane as she was going through the process, and it's just really interesting. It's it's a really nice story. Um, the book, I can show you. I'll just show you a page. Um, it's basic. So you get a picture. You get a picture of the original and then what it should look like. And I think that's the right size. So it doesn't include seam allowances. It doesn't explain the um, order that you should put the block together. It's a real like mental challenge um, and it's fun. It's really fun. So my Dear Jane um, is done on, I'm using Tula Pink fabrics. So they're really bright and bold colors, very different to the original. And when I started, I didn't have a sewing machine, <laughs> didn't have access to a sewing machine. So what I'm about to show you is all hand pieced and hand quilted. Um, so I'll just show you what I have done, which is not much. I think this might be the first one that I did. And I, now I've learned to fussy cut. So I'd put something more interesting in the middle there, but that's all, all done by hand, no machinery in that at all. And then what I'm doing is um, rather than piecing the whole thing, the whole quilt top and then getting the wadding and then um, the backing, I'm actually doing each square as I go. So it's called quilt as you go. So once you've done your, your pattern, you get some wadding that goes behind it or in the middle really. And then you get your backing fabric and I'm using um, whatever fabric I've used on the square on the front is what I'm using on the back as just a block. So for this one, it's this. So then you join the three layers together. So that's the quilting. Um, and so I have one that's almost done. I saw that it's not quite done, but there's another one. That little cross in the middle there, quarter of an inch uh, wide. <laughs> uh, and there's the back. So that's a bit better, the, the focus is in the middle. And then, <laughs> this one's really dodgy, but I'm just gonna keep it because it was my first go applique. Um, I might just not worry about the applique ones. I think I'm going to um, do a modified version and a smaller version, not do all of, the, all of them, but there's my go applique. But I did get the fussy cut with the face in the middle. <laughs> and there's the back. And then to join them, you use a bit of um, sashing in between, the, in between. So there's a couple more. And then look how bright it is. It's gonna be amazing. So now I have a sewing machine. Um, it's gonna make life a lot easier. I don't know about the quilting side of it yet, but I'm pretty sure I can piece it on the machine. So I'd love to do maybe one square a week, something like that. Um, we'll see. It's fun. Um, and because you don't need much fabric for each square, so each of my squares are um, five inches by five inches. Tiny. So those ones that are quite intricate, um, those little triangles are really, really small. Um, yeah, so you don't need much fabric per square. So I've been able to get little bits of lots of different um, patterns that she's got out. And that's just, a, that's just a small example. There's no rhyme or reason to how I'm picking them. 
um, at all. It's completely random. Okay, so that's everything. Um, I'm really looking forward to Mitagong next week. Um, I might see some of you there. If not, um, hopefully I'll be back soon for another video. Thanks for hanging around and, and watching. See ya.